Hi, and welcome to this video on how to do a content marketing audit to increase your email subscribers. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien, and I'm an online marketing and social media coach, and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy, and systems. And today, as I talked about, I want to be, taught, I want to be uh, uh, focusing on how to do a content marketing audit. And I'll provide a template as well that you can use to help make this process much easier for you. But this video is part of the subscriber project which I'm doing, which shows a little behind the scenes of the type of tasks I do in my business to increase my email subscribers, which of course uh, then turn into our clients as well and I want to show you how you can do the same so this is one of the tasks that I'm doing in my business right now because I have a goal to get to a thousand email subscribers and this task is helping me do that I can create new pieces of content which I'm doing this video in itself is a new piece of content but uh, to be able to get instant results uh, we need to look at doing uh, an audit of all the assets that we currently have so there's three particular steps that we need to look at when we're doing a content marketing audit. Now a really important task to do before we even get onto the three steps is to set up Google Console. Now if you haven't done this already, it's important to either get your web developer to do it or learn how to do this yourself. It's a pretty uh, quick task to do in your business, but what it does is not only helps us with this audit, but it also uh, allows Google to send us notifications when there are issues with our website that we need to fix. So uh, set up Google Console, once that is done, then we get to connect that with our Google Analytics. Now, if you don't also have Google Analytics set up, then that is a really vital step to have to be able to know what's going on with your website. So what the uh, two do is that uh, Google Analytics will pull in all the keywords and impressions that you have from uh, Google results from the Google Console. Uh, and it can be really valuable to be able to look at this and look at the data to know what to do next with your content marketing. So what we're doing is not creating new blog posts, as I said, we're audit, audit, auditing our existing content. And the three steps that we're going to be doing today are, number one is looking for blog posts to get traffic to your website every single day. Now we can look at that through uh, looking at the pages section, under the Google Console section in Google Analytics, and it will show us which blog posts are ranking well. Now, if we click on that link that goes into a specific blog post, it will show us the keywords or the search terms that someone has used to be able to actually find our blog post. Now, sometimes they uh, just find it in the results of Google and don't actually click it, and sometimes they click and come through and read our blog post or the page if it happens to be a page. Now what we're looking for first of all are blog posts that are getting traffic to our website but when we look at our email subscribers for that particular opt-in we're not getting opt-ins. Now I have one in particular my business storytelling blog post gets lots of traffic from, social, from uh, Google but unfortunately the opt-in rate is really low on this one. So my first task is to find a better opt-in for this blog post to try and increase the um, opt-ins that I'm getting or the email subscribers that I get from this blog post. So that's my first task to do is to find a better opt-in. And as we go through the subscriber project, I'll talk more about finding better opt-ins for your website, things that work, things that don't particularly work. The one that I have at the moment, I need to be asking the question of what is a better um, opt-in for this particular blog post or what would be a next best step after somebody's read this blog post, what do they want to do next? I need to create a piece of content, whether that's a video, a PDF, um, or an audio, whatever it happens to be, but it needs to, or a webinar even, needs to be something that takes them to the next step that they're, um, they're hungry for so that they can keep moving through my pathway. So we've just found all the blog posts that get clicks, which is great. Now what about all those blog posts that get lots of impressions, but no clicks? That's what we're looking at in the second step. So what we need to do with these uh, blog posts 
is we need to look at, okay, they get high impressions, they're getting no clicks, which means that people are seeing our blog post in the results of Google search. However, they're not clicking because it's not enticing enough. So what you need to think about is that headline and the meta description that someone sees inside of their Google search results uh, needs to read like an ad. It needs to be really clickable and get them through to the next step. Remember everything in a client pathway or a sales funnel or a marketing funnel, whatever you want to call it, uh, needs to be about what is the next step and how do I get them there. So in this case, we're getting great impressions. We're just not getting them to go to the next step, which is visiting our website. Now the way to change this is to go into the back end of the blog post uh, if you're in WordPress and uh, for example, in my system, I use all-in-one SEO plugin. You may use Yoast. Those are two that um, I particularly um, recommend as if you're using a WordPress website. So what we're looking at is the headline in that SEO plugin. We can change the headline here so that it's actually different to what the uh, blog post is that they land on. So you have a, uh, a title at the top of the page, but if we're in the SEO section or in this plugin section, we're looking at just what is the headline here and we can change that so that it is more Google friendly or something that someone's most likely to click on. Because sometimes what people search for in Google and what they'll click on might be different to what they see in Facebook um, as a result of, you know, as a result there. So the blog post title that you currently have might work really well on Facebook, but for Google it might not. So this is where you can edit that so that it makes more sense, sense to someone who's searching for the particular uh, terms that you're ranking for. The other part is the meta description. And this is the uh, couple of sentences that come underneath that um, headline that are the bits that entice someone to click through. Now it's important that our main keyword is in the title. It doesn't so matter if it's in the um, meta description. However, I, I feel that it's good to still have it in there. It's not a ranking factor, but um, it is um, you know, important for someone who's searching something that if the keyword also appears there, because it will be bolded, then um, it is a, a trigger to get them to click through. And the click through rate um, of something from Google is actually a ranking factor. So it's really important to make sure that our blog post meta description and headline are clickable because if people are clicking through and going to the next step, then Google is more likely to rank that blog post higher for us. So really important that, okay, we've, um, we've got the impressions, now we need to get the clicks and this is how we can improve and ensure that we get those clicks. So the third step that we're going to look at as part of our audit is to rank the keywords by their position. Uh, the position that they rank in Google. So when we're looking at our keywords, we want to look at what page it's associated with and sometimes that's as easy as putting the keyword into Google and putting your website address after it to see what the actual page is if you're not quite sure what the keyword is connected to. But when we can see these keywords, what we're looking for is the keywords that are on page two, three, four, um, maybe even five, but we, what we're looking to do is trying to get them on page one. So sometimes you may not be aware that you're ranking for a particular keyword, but if you go and look at that blog post, you haven't used that specific blog, that specific keyword as is, like in the, the form that you're, being, that you're ranking for. So this is a great opportunity to go back and actually edit the blog post so that you can um, rank higher for that particular keyword. So if you're ranking page two or three right now, we're actually putting that keyword in the blog post as is, as it's being searched for, or even um, putting it in a, a couple of times if it is, you've already got it in there once, maybe you need to put it in there again um, so that you can increase the density of it. Don't go overboard or that can be a trigger to get it banned completely, but um, looking for those opportunities to increase the ranking of that particular keyword, or you can look at it from the other perspective and look at blog posts that are ranking on page two or three, look at the keywords connected to it and see what other keywords you can be adding into the blog post to help it rank higher. So there's just a few tips, three different things that you can be looking at inside of your blog posts and inside of Google Analytics when you have that Google Console connected to it. That's going to be really powerful in ensuring that you get more email subscribers because that's what we want. And if we're getting impressions but no clicks, then we're never going to get email subscribers. We're getting clicks 
and they are going to our website, but the opt-in on that blog post isn't working, then we're still not getting our email, email subscribers and building that database. So this is a really great way for you to be able to help you get to a thousand email sub subscribers if you've already got a blog and you've got existing content then start looking at how you can improve the content that you've already created. Maybe the content just needs to be longer. Maybe it's shorter than 500 words and you could be adding more content to it. So find ways that you can improve the content that you currently have. Have a look at um, other pieces of content that rank for the keywords that you rank for. Find out why those pieces of content might be better than what you've created and how you can improve the piece that you've got so it um, outranks everyone else. So they're the three tips, as I said, for um, doing a content marketing audit for your website. Now I've provided a content marketing audit template that you can download for free and start using to help you manage the blog posts that you're working on, what you're doing, and it gives you some steps on how to go through that. Now, if you're really unsure on how to do the whole Google Analytics, Google Console, or do this as a uh, full system, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, then the Client Pathway uh, Library actually has a tutorial on how to do all this. It will step you through with videos, um, step by step on every single step that you need, uh, every single action you need to take to be able to make this strategy work for you. So you can find more about the Client Pathway Library below, but if you have any questions, please reach out and I can't wait to see how many email subscribers you're having now that you've improved your results. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.